It is Tuesday, October 19th, and we are learning about variables. All right. Um, we are going to be logging into code.org and doing work. Our warm up is what happens in a program if something changes? Think about that. What happens in a program if something changes? We're going to be looking at unit four, lesson one, variables. Uh, what is do is your unit three app activity guide tomorrow, Wednesday. That's and the unit three test that everybody did. If you have not done it yet, you need to get it done. Uh, the goal is that students will be able to explore the concept of variables in a computer program. Okay, uh, so what happens in a program if something changes? Ideally, you need something that's going to be changeable, right? There needs to be some element that you can put something that's a different value and have it you know, be maintained. That is what we will be talking about, variables. So for the next series of units, we will be learning about computer science by going on a four lesson path. That four lesson path comprises day one, we will explore the information, Day two, we will investigate the information. Day three, we will practice using the information. And day four, we will make a program with the information. Uh, so this is code.org's EIPM technique. Explore, investigate, practice, and make. It's a very successful way to make this uh, programming work and have it make sense to you. Okay, I hope you enjoy. So here we go. We're going into unit four, lesson one, variables explore. So I want you to go into circle one. I think it circles one through four. Uh, uh, you're going to be looking at the apps that are in here. Uh, this pet rock app needs, this pet rock needs some love. If you click on him enough, he just might evolve into a very special pet rock. The, this is the rock a bunny that you get after 52 clicks, apparently. Uh, so navigate to lesson one, level one on code.org and take a look. Uh, these are samples of the kinds of apps you'll be able to build by the end of this unit. As you go through them, write down at least two examples where the app seems to be keeping track of a piece of information or using it to make a decision. Uh, hint, there is something in our module related to this. So we're gonna have four minutes to go through this, all right? Stop the tape. Okay, we're back. So how was that? What did you see in there that was changing? What seemed to be keeping track of a piece of information or using it to make a decision? Ideas, random calling. Okay. So today we are handing out all, everybody ideally is gonna be paired up and we'll have two bags, at baggies and a marker. Uh, you're gonna have uh, yellow post-its and you're going to have uh, pink post-its. All right. Uh, this is a crazy system, but it really seems to work. Okay. So ideally you'll have a little something that you can just erase what's on your bag and do it. Uh, you'll get the point. All right. Value. One piece of information goes on a sticky. Numbers made of digits, zero through nine, no quotation marks go on a yellow sticky. Um, strings made of any character inside double quotes go on a pink sticky, okay? Typically see how it's letters like hi and hi there, but it can also be letters and a number like see you later or one, two, three. Once you put it inside the double quotation marks, it is now a string. A string is just an object. It's a way computers do not read English. They do not read letters. They understand numbers. They do not need quotes. This turns these basically into a giant icon. 
but they recognize the icon. Okay, so make one number and one string and share it at your table, okay? Not too tough. All right, how is that? What did you pick for your number and your string? Okay, operators are fancy names for plus, minus, times, and divided, okay? Those are mathematical operators, all right? So we're saying two plus three, plus is the operator, evaluates to five, all right? We, that is an expression, two plus three. Combination of operators and values evaluates to a single value, all right? So two plus three evaluates to five. Do this, evaluate this expression. Five minus one, what does that evaluate to? All right, any guesses? Right, it evaluates to four. So five minus one just evaluates to four, it's just regular math. All right, let's go through these. Three plus four, evaluates to seven. Five minus two evaluates to three. It's just the straight math. There's nothing fancy here. 11 times two, 22. 10 divided by two is five, evaluates to five. Now, it gets a little trickier when we get to the strings. How do we deal with this? Four in quotation marks plus ever evaluates to forever. No space, no nothing. All right, gr plus eight evaluates to a string, gr8, great, right? But it will be a string. You cannot turn it back into a number. Two plus day becomes two day. It is now a string. If you're doing one or two strings, you can only use the operator plus. The others don't make sense. Evaluate these expressions. Pay attention to what color stickies you create and if you use quotes. All right, here we go. Four plus five is? Right, nine. Uh, 10 minus nine is? Evaluates to one, right? There we are. Tree plus house goes to? Treehouse, treehouse in quotation marks, double quotation marks. U plus R, your, correct. Three plus D, a number and a string, turns into a string, 3D. 3D in quotation marks, okay? Now, we're gonna play with our bags. Actually. And here I am gonna bring on my camera so that I can demonstrate for you the magnificent art of the baggie and the variable. Okay, so plastic baggies can hold at most one value. So name uses no quotes, includes no spaces and must start with a letter. So this is zip and then we have, where's my friend Woo? There is whoop. Oh no, somehow I have a background. Sorry about this. There we are. Okay. So I'm trying to get the light right here. So I've got the two variable, two baggies here. We've got zip and whoop. All right. So make one variable with any name you like and share it with another group. So you're supposed to make another zip block. And this is sort of a weird thing because there's not much use for it. Um, but anyway, here we go. I'm gonna have five is gonna go into zip and hi is gonna go into Bob. I got a five here, it's a little bright. Uh, let's see if I can actually get a little light on. 
and make things not quite as dramatic. Here we go. Uh, it's not much better, but it's a little bit. Okay, so here's five is in zip. There, that's much better. Uh, five is in zip and, oh, I need a bop. Luckily, I have a whole bag of these. So there is bop. And Bop is going to get high. Luckily, we use high a lot. I have high right here. Okay, so we have these two. So now when we look at this, three plus zip, right? Three plus five, right? That five is what is in zip. Uh, so three plus five evaluates to what? To eight, perfect. Whoops, sorry, I'm going off screen. So now let's look at bop plus zip, okay? So here's bop, here's bop and zip. Can we see them? There we go. So high plus five evaluates to what? What is that going to evaluate to? Well, let's take a look. High five, that's right. It's going to be on a pink card. It's going to be a string with the double quotation marks. High five, great job. Okay, evaluate these expressions. Make sure to pay attention whether it evaluates to a string or a number. Okay, I've got boo, I've got boo needs four. And RAR gets B, B. Boo gets four, RAR gets three, gets B, sorry. There it is. There's my fabulous B. B is going into RAR. Okay, so I have Boo and RAR, my two variables. Uh, you can just see it. Um, there it is. That's not, that's not good. Uh, well, it is kind of good. You get the idea. Um, all right. So three plus boo, three times boo. Boo is four. Oops, sorry. Boo is a little uh, cockeyed. There we are. So three times four times boo is going to be what? That's going to be 12, right? Let's see. Hey, it's 12. Uh, RAR plus EP, okay? RAR is B, sorry, it's in here sideways. We'll hold RAR right up for the camera. Uh, so RAR plus e EP is gonna be what? Beep, that's right, in quotation marks. RAR plus boo. Oh, RAR plus boo, sorry, we're gonna do it that way. So that's going to be what? What will that be? It will be B4, correct. All right, let's start writing programs that control our variables. We're going to stop using stickies, but we'll highlight strings in pink and numbers in yellow to help you remember the difference, OK? All right, VAR, VAR, that creates a new variable, lowercase VAR. Grab a new baggie and write the variable's name on the bag. I'm actually going to take an old baggie and I'm just going to erase it. All right. So var, and we're going to name it pow. Uh, so we've got this. There is actually like a digital manipulative. Um, so write the variable's name on the baggie pow. Uh, you're on line number zero, zero var pow, this is our POW, right? This is our variable bag. Do this, run this program. Uh, so assignment operator, assign is a fancy name for putting a value inside the bag. 
var pow, the variable can only hold one stick. If there's already a sticky note in there, throw it away. Pow gets three and pow gets five. Okay, I'm gonna do this anyway. Um, so I'm gonna make myself a pow and I've got a five, I just need a three, okay? So hang on, luckily I have a stack of stickies and I've got, okay, so this is POW, P-O-W, hang on, let me, maybe if I do it like that, it looks a little better. There we go. So there's POW, POW is going to get three. That's what that arrow says. That means uh, goes into, get. Uh, you'll see it's also what an equal sign means. So pow gets three. Three goes into pow, right? Three is a number. There it goes. Bang. Pow is in. There. Then pow gets five. Okay. So up, oh, I gotta take five out of zip. Gotta borrow a little something from zip. But what does it mean that pow, which has three and it gets five? How does that work? So what happens is only one thing can ever be in a variable. So the three must get taken out before the five can go in. You can never have two things in a baggie, okay? So five goes in now. All right, so pow gets five. Pow gets three and then pow gets five, okay? Bar pow. Pow gets three, three gets thrown away, pow gets five, okay? Did we see that? All right, here we go. We've got another one. We're gonna do this without me guiding you through it. So run this program, compare your results with another group. Create a variable pizza. Pizza gets three, Var create a variable tacos, Bar tacos, pizza gets yum, the string Y-U-M, tacos gets the best. What do you end up with? Okay, let's take a look. Here we are, pizza's yum, and tacos are the best. That is what you end up with. Assign a variable with expression. Evaluate the expression first to get one value. Assign the value as normal. Okay, so we're back to our friend var pow. Pow gets one plus. Hang on. So pow gets one plus two. Evaluate uh, the expression. Pow gets three, right? Then pow gets three plus four. Pow gets seven. I don't know why it doesn't seem to be doing its proper order on that one. Okay, uh, run this program, compare results with another group. Uh, create the variable zow, Z-O-W. Create the variable fly. Fly gets two plus day. What is that going to evaluate to? The string to day. Uh, Zhao gets four minus one. So Zhao's going to get three. Fly then gets nine, three times three. And Zhao gets the string for now on pink with the L quotation marks. Right? Zhao is for now and fly is nine. Okay, we're not gonna highlight our strings and numbers anymore. We can just use double quotes around the strings to tell the difference. Assign a variable, expression with a variable. Evaluate the expression on the right first, get one value and assign the value as normal. Note, variables aren't connected. Changing kit doesn't change boo. So we create kit, bar kit, Kit gets one, 
Then we create var boo. Uh, boo gets kit plus one, kit gets five. So what's the end result of this? Let's take a look. Okay, var kit, kit gets one, kit is still one, boo, we've created boo. Boo gets kit plus one. So that's two, right? Because kit was one. Then kit gets five. So boo is gonna be two, the one gets thrown away and a five replaces the one in kit. Five to kit five, boo two. That is the answer. All right, run this program. Compare your results with another group. Ver create the variable fuzz, create the variable clip. Fuzz gets five, clip gets fuzz plus two, fuzz gets clip plus one, Clip gets GR plus fuzz. Fuzz equals uh, fuzz gets fuzz plus one. Fuzz gets fuzz plus one. Fuzz gets fuzz plus one. What is this thing doing? Okay, let's take a look. You get fuzz 11 and great. Okay. Key takeaways, numbers and strings are two different kinds of values, okay? 10 divided by two evaluates to five. Sorry, just trying to see if I can fix this. Okay. Evaluate first, then assign. So 10 divided by two, first you evaluate that, and that evaluates to five. Old values are deleted forever. They are thrown away in the trash can. Uh, assignment just moves information around. It does not connect the variable. Uh, in some languages, including JavaScript, the assignment operator is not written as an arrow. It is written as the equal sign, okay? That is the assignment operator, the one that says this gets this value. So the command fuzz gets fuzz plus one, it can also be written as fuzz gets, the equal sign gets fuzz plus one. In math, equals means are forever equal, equal forever. In programming, equals means put this value in this variable. The, you know, the variable fuzz gets that value. We'll see this more next time. Okay. An expression is a combination of operators and values that evaluate to a single value. Pow gets one plus two. A variable holds one value at a time. The variable in a baggie, pow. Look, there's my pow, it's got a five in it, okay? Assignment operator allows a program to change the value represented by a variable, by a variable with an arrow or an equal sign. An equal sign means gets, an arrow means gets, how gets three, okay? Well done, great day.